and I eat more fruit than anyone I know in Australia. You know, I'd probably be top 10 in the world for fruit eaters. 95% plus of my calories coming from sweet fruits, like dates, mangoes, bananas, jackfruit. So it's fruit for breakfast, fruit for lunch, fruit for dinner, followed by some greens, occasionally some nuts and seeds. Yeah. Sometimes I get really good watermelon, I really stuff myself with it, and I can't even move. <laughs> I believe it's impossible to overeat on fruit. Overeating would imply one's getting obese. My record is 72 large bananas, <laughs> like big bananas. Well, that is it. But uh, me and Mango, we are more like Buddha, you know, we like to sit and enjoy the life, just look at everything in the detail, and we're not big uh, sports people. Do you drink much water or? No, not at all. That's your problem. You're dehydrated. For me, I never needed water, and uh, I'm, I think I'm doing fine, I don't You'll triple dehydrated. your energy levels when you start drinking water. Hydrate. You'll be like, wow, I've been missing out. <laughs> but we don't sweat, we don't do any, uh, you know, Because you're dehydrated, because you can't, because you're dehydrated. You believe I can be dehydrated for 23 yeah. years well, and don't get no health problems from it? My grandma's, everyone's dehydrated in society. Unfortunately, it seems to be the case that uh, there are quite a few different definitions of fruitarian that are floating around. The definition of fruitarian could be, some people say it's just fruit, some people say it's fruits, greens and nuts and seeds, things like that. And the nuts are not fruit and the greens are not fruit, so please don't call yourself fruitarian if you eat other things than fruit. And then got a little upset with me. Uh, the way that we live is very different to the way that you live. So the sweating yeah. is something that, that would be natural for you because mm -hmm. you, you are going out and doing these things, mm -hmm. whereas we're not doing them. Mm -hmm. So we're not dehydrated in the same way that you would be exactly. if you weren't getting the water that, that you were taking in. Yeah. Is it healthy yeah. to be sedentary, though? That's the question. Uh, it is, is, it is it healthy to push yourself to an extreme? Yeah. yeah. To, to what, sort of really push yourself extreme, to the extreme? Though? We think you push your bodies to extreme. You think we don't doing anything. If you look at other animals out in nature, there's none of the animals that really train and push themselves to the extreme like, like yes, yours. They do. No, only if they're chased by some other animal only and then the adrenaline is going. It, but if, if you, you watch your, uh, other animals that are living very peaceful lives and not being chased, they won't, they name, won't run around. Name me an animal mango. Well, a cow. A cow. A cow s stands up all day and night supporting its ton of body weight and it walks, you know, They'll walk, they'll migrate for eons if they get the cho chance. And another animal. Uh, I don't even think that this is, uh, the, the cow, I mean, you know, I could do the same kind of thing. Well, we're well, sitting I'm down. Cow can't even sit down. They've got to use their energy all day standing up. Well, whether we're sitting down or standing up, we're still using energy. That's mm -hmm. I'd like to believe that it's a very natural process going from raw foodism to fruitarianism, but uh, certainly I know from experience and watching other people that it's not always the case. And I don't, I don't fully understand why. I mean, p people are very difficult to fathom, and uh, I guess we all have to come up with our own conclusions. If the bear doesn't fatten up before its hibernation, it will die. If a, you know, an eagle doesn't fatten up before its migration, it will die. If a, a deer doesn't you know, have enough strength from eating enough, it won't last the mating cycle. If a salmon doesn't eat enough, it won't make the migration. There is no animal in nature that under eats. Yep. Well, this is it. This is the, um, I've got some organic cuts here or mints. This is the pork mints and I'm just going to indulge. And from memory... Tastes good? Yeah. Um, I've just found the meat thing for the time being. I'm doing all right with it. A bit of rotten meat now and again, it's like a, it's like a supplement, but I, I'd prefer to eat fresh stuff, to be honest with you. Fresh stuff, it's got less bacteria in it. Yep. A good way to get bacteria is to get your own poo and put smear it on a steak and put it in a glass jar and put it in the fridge. Yeah, well, I haven't heard that one, but I've heard um, mostly herbivore um, droppings or, you know, like stools. Um, you can get a lot of good bacteria yep. from it. He's cured people with cancer from it. What? Stools? Yeah. I don't know, it's, it's quite strange talking about this. You get a meat eater that comes along, oh, I'm eating shit, I'll do this, i do that, and I've been just in hospital the other day. Well, that's a great thing for vegans, isn't it? Makes vegans look like, you know, like the, the night in shining. We're lost. I, I've got $10,000 in the bank, and I'd be willing to put $10,000 on the table. We'll put, get a baby, like a two-month-old or six-month-old, put it in a cot with... Make it a year so it's not lactating. 
okay, a year, a year old human toddler baby in a cot with a mango and a baby rabbit. And if the, the kid eats the rabbit, oh you get 10 grand. But that's totally bullshit. What you were speaking right that's there now is crap.